It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Obi Ajulu on Labisi Ubo, and with me are the ladies. Excellent morning, ladies. Hi, Top. Where are you doing today? I'm very good. I'm grateful to God for life. Yesterday, I had an amazing time in my um, LBS program, the Entrepreneurship Development Program. And it is, I heard the story of a, a man called IG, he's the founder of Construction Kaiser. Mm. And he shared his integrity story. So all the past, like last week, this week, we were talking about business ethics. And something struck me was we've gotten so used to the wrong things that we believe it is right. Mm. And we feel like the, person, someone that sticks to principles and ethics cannot thrive. Mm. So hearing the founder of Construction Kaiser, I just talk about how is, he created a policy in his company of no bribery how they don't cut corners, how they paid over 100 million naira to tax officials, if of tax officially, even mm. when there was an option of bribing the officials and for less, for for lesser, less amount. lesser amount of wow. money. And how it, 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 even despite what seemed like a tough journey of consistently choosing right, he has enjoyed progress. Mm. It was a very inspiring session. Wow. I, I felt very grateful to be a Nigerian. I felt like we should start redefining who a Nigerian yes. is. A Nigerian is not, the, is not a corrupt person. person. A Nigerian mm. is not someone who cuts corners. Nigerians are honest. We are good people. We are hardworking. And there is hope for us, you mm. know. We just need to highlight more of those stories. I like that message this morning. There's <laughs> hope. How are you doing, Nima? I'm fine. I'm grateful <laughs> to God. And I love to hear more stories like this. I think that... The narrative out there that we are lawless, mm. no consequence people should be, you know, um, more killed totally, in fact, wiped out completely. And we'll push, push out more stories. We had the uh, estate value, one, uh, I'm trying to remember his name because I had to read his book. He was on this set and his entire years in civil service, how he stood for the right things mm. was embodied in that book. Like that. So we need more of such stories to inspire those of us who believe mm. principles are the way to go. I don't understand living anyhow. Mm. So because you're no, Nigerian. Uh, yeah. There's no and, living anyhow. And then when you try then. living honestly, everybody will be looking at you like, yeah, yeah, you're normal. normal. Mm. So you start yeah. looking at yourself like, ah, is this the right way? Then because we have no to see those things. stories. Yeah. When you read them, it makes you feel like, is the, is the right way. And we can also start growing the next generation in yeah. such ways. Yeah. Deliberately about our kids. The way our parents used to tell us, in my house, there's no, there's yeah. no lying. Yeah. 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 Because I asked so. this man that, why are you, why, how are you like this? And he said his father rejected bribes. His father, mm. he saw his father. So that growing up. Yes. Saying that you bring hamper, who are you? You want a contract? No, take the hamper back. I'm not going to collect this. And that was what he grew up with. Of course, some of some people might not some can grow up there and still choose corruption, but we just need to keep sharing those stories so that some people watching, watching can be inspired. Mm. So, today we start camping. My madam has gone to the Muslim teens camp. I think that um, the Islamic Education Faith Initiative in Magodo did something very huge. I said um, my story growing up, the opportunity I had when we moved to Iba Estate, getting professors from universities in Medina, universities around the world, explain yeah. faith to me mm. is why you can see me sit here and Standing own strong. my faith yeah. and identify boldly with my faith. And I'm hoping that my daughter gets that I lesson too. So we are there. If you're a Muslim, take advantage of such places. And the facilitators, as people that have you know, also um, learned under the Yakin Institute, they've done clean they work. They've, they've even, you know, Reduce, in, in, um, made easy for us to live in today's world. Yeah. Transgender, you know, all of that. Their books are clean and, and <laughs> Please, Let me talk to all right, you. We are going hey, that no, way. No, 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 no. I styled <laughs> BC's hair this morning. <laughs> hey, yes, Everybody yes. in the Russian Mali, look <laughs> at this hair. Is it not beautiful? Yeah, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Oh, thank you. House of BC, hair by TMO. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, ladies, Pop let's go on the short break. Pop. When we come back, we take the newspaper reviews. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live 
from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. PVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news. Conditions of remaining 27 train attack victims critical, says negotiator. Jai's bank targets 150 billion to fund companies. Don't lose hope, IBB tells Nigerians. Insecurity. Terrorist bandits are threats to 2023 poll, says Dambazao. Federal government ASU talks deadlocked. 2023 disquiet in PDP as Obi meets Wiki, Autumn and others. Russian police intercept 14 suspects, 12 motorcycles in truck, 14 drown in Lagos. What stories do we have in the nation? So I have the train um, attack um, story update. So a former negotiator with the abductors of the Kaduna Abuja train, Malam Tuko Mamu, has said that you know the remaining 27 passengers in captivity are in critical conditions. He said he 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 said uh, that the fake news spreading around about their release is irresponsible and that the peddlers of such news should consider the minds um, the states of the family members and even those in captivity presently mm. said that they've not been released and use the opportunity to hold the president to do whatever is possible to to um, secure their rescue or their release and is also re-emphasizing that that place is not a place to be. This is over five months of the abduction mm. and that we should do whatever is possible. It's a short story really just telling us that they're in a bad state mm. as we know already but Something also by done. using that to ask that you know the best is done to get their release. And Nobody should stay in captivity. Yeah. They keep saying that but from his um, side of things it seems like that's Nothing not exactly is happening. the truth. Wow. So um, let me take that. For <coughs> the spokesperson for the police in Osho State, Yemisi Opalola, was um, giving reports concerning um, a, a report, was information they got. They got information about a truck, an unregistered truck, mm. conveying motorcycles and people coming into Osho State. They were able, when they got the information, the police intercepted the bus at around Oke, the truck, Oke, Okeodo area of Ushubo, and found 14 motorcycles that looked stolen. They were used motorcycles, looked stolen. There was no paperwork to say this is how it was gotten. Wow. And they found 14 people in the truck with no clear explanation about where are you going to, mm. where are you coming from. And now they said they've, been, they've handed over those 14 suspects to the Criminal Investigation Department for further investigation and profiling. And, and I see, I, see I, I believe it is good to always do, do this investigation so that you don't just have hiding people coming into your state. But Nigeria is one. Mm, you're like, allowed um, to movement travel. is yeah. right but whenever you are going to another state you must know where you are going to and what you are going to what do what business you're going, going to do i my cousin in underbridge somewhere somewhere for two weeks mm. but when people move like this without any clear idea what they want to do they might even with good intentions they might fall into the wrong hands mm. and become criminals as a means of livelihood yeah, so i applaud survive. the police for what they are doing and a lot more needs to be done to support them by giving them the information whenever you see something suspicious. Now, Motaka is doing a lot too in that regard, mm. taking stories where they have to take them back and mm -hmm. escort them home. So, um, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, uh, said yesterday that six states are at a high risk of flooding following the continuous rainfall. And they mentioned Central Boronu, Northern Sokoto, Kebi, Central Kaduna, Delta, and Bielsa State. And they're saying they are likely to experience flooding for the next three months. So it's more like a warning that they are giving to. And they said they had to carry out a test. There's this soil moisture uh, test that they carry out to determine either the dryness or the wetness of the land will tell how the rains are going to be. And this is, um, I was thinking uh, they would give um, additional advice on what people need to do who are living in those areas but it's more like listing the states, states that need to be very uh, careful this period a lot of other states were included i think uh, sokoto zamfara kastina kanu jigawa yobe bronu bauchi kb almost all the states in the country just need let's to just take precautions yes let's move on now to the punch asu federal government meeting deadlocked lecturer stage workout 
Bandits, IPOB members threat to 2023 elections, Dambazao. Why 7 million diasporans, other Nigerians unregistered, INEC. U.S. group opposes Benin Bronze's return to Nigeria. PDP crisis, Atiku, weakest men hold peace talks on Friday. That's children, 144 Libya, Libya returnees arrive Nigeria. Four students celebrating Waiek at Lagos Beach drown. Murdered Mapoli Queen's corpse found on her birthday. Firo restores demoted officer's salary amidst fraud trial. Uh, what stories do we have in the punch? Okay, so I have the picture story <clears throat> in the punch. According to the, to the Oga of NEMA, that's the Lagos Territorial Office Coordinator for the National Emergency Management Agency, Lagos Zone, he said that 174 stranded Nigerians were returned from Libya um, yesterday. And um, he took account of them, 23 persons out of these people came with mild, what he called mild medical cases. I hope that it is indeed mild. He also talked about how this is the 12th flight that is returning mm. from Libya. I don't know, we've, I think a proper documentary, but I know the Nigerian Diaspora Commission continues to do an advocacy about this um, means of migration. That, or that route of migration out of the country that, you know, talking about how dangerous it is. But I think we should have visuals, mm. proper documentary that shows how tough <laughs> and the level of slavery and, you know, dangerous, how dangerous that place is. So people, we will deter people from even buying into an idea of a better future through uh, trans uh, uh, Africa or whatever, uh, through, through the, the Sahel into Libya and into Europe. This is not a good way to, to migrate. Nobody says you must stay here since everybody wants to jack up, but go the right way and go safe, please. Mm. Okay, so there's been crisis at um, the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Ushudi, mm -hmm. Lagos, and this crisis had been ongoing, a lot of drama. Um, investigation came out that the um, acting director um, or in, of the institute actually didn't have a proper university degree. They said maybe he falsified his documents. Then the the, the a university university the Abome Calvin from Bene Bene Republic in 2001 was not a valid certificate, and he had used this certificate to get undeserved promotions and salaries. Mm. So um, the previous um, board, led by Alaji Ibrahim Guazo found out about the academic fraud, made public the information, and told him to back, he should repay 18 years of salaries that he got as a director without duly deserving it. Hmm. Um, this Igwe now hmm. went back to the same university in the Republic, got a PhD, um, awarded PhD, given to him, and the board that found the academic challenges, in, uh, academic, academic, academic discrepancies, had been taken away, a new board constituted, and now it's been reinstated as a director. Yes. There is, there is, <laughs> the, the newspaper started by saying there's no end in sight mm. for the challenge in um, FIRO. Now, FIRO is Federal Institute of Industrial Research. This is an important institute. If this institute is working at full capacity, we would have major positive effects in our economy and our country mm -hmm. at large. We cannot afford to be seen using kid gloves to deal with an issues issue like of this. discrepancy. Yeah. Let everybody face the rule of law. If you are good, go through the justice system and be released. If you are doing something wrong, then reform the monies and step down honorably. Well, let's take a short break. When we come back, we continue on the newspaper reviews. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy E-Splash, and of course, 
award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC Communications Story. Welcome back. So uh, we're still in the punch. I have a human interest story here. It said um, four kids drowned at Elegushi mm -hmm. Beach um, after they were trying to celebrate their West African Senior School examination. And they were people, uh, pupils of the Kurama Senior College, Leki. So they went to this uh, particular beach to celebrate. And by the time they got there, I think uh, the area they were trying to swim was not an area that was allowed for young people to get to so they drove them the i think the management of the place had to drive them away but they snuck back in to continue the swimming and before you realized it they started drowning they were able to rescue i think about six of them four are still missing as at now they haven't found them they haven't found their body they have spoken to their parents about it and they have you know they kept saying that the person who snuck them in is i think um the son of one of the people who worked there so he didn't even pay to get into the beach because he had mm -hmm. that connection to bring them in mm -hmm. and that out of the six people that they got four of them escaped so they held to they've taken them to the police they are questioning them and they are calling their parents to come it's just a painful story let me quickly take the update on um the Bini bruises <laughs> so the Bini bruises good news we were all thinking it was good news but i love the, the past it's good to read this perspective as well so a group of people in the u.s because when you say you think it's america itself it's actually okay. a group okay. um a civil rights organization in the u.s it's called restitution um restitution study group they, they sent a letter to um the uk the university um of oxford and the people that are trying to repatriate those um artifacts to us to say that the artifacts <coughs> are going to be benefiting people who traded in slave, um, traded slaves. Okay. Mm. That the Africans who will be getting it back, that the reason these um, artifacts went were because Africans were trading their brothers in slave trade, and now they're going to be getting benefit of having the artifacts back. That no, it is people that suffered slave trade mm. that should be able to go and see. This is what my parents were. So how do we know the people that suffered the slave trade? People that now? were traded now, the, the yes, U.S. people America. that. The black Americans who were taken, oh, that's okay. the Benin, the heads, the leaders in Benin took people, sold their people in slavery and that they shouldn't be rewarded, the, the Benin kingdom shouldn't be rewarded for this. I think that the um, spokesperson for the Oba of Benin should address yeah. this concern. Let's have a formal, okay. this really needs to be told in clear terms. Yeah, so, let's quickly move on to the Daily Sun. Presidency Obi Wu's aggrieved PDP members meets party governors in Port Harcourt. 
PDP considers role for Wike in Atiku's campaign. Lalong begs Catholic bishop over comment on Pope. Diri laments 1,700 abandoned NDDC projects in Bayelsa, urges Buhari to constitute board. Nigeria will save two trillion from malaria elimination, Buhari. Electricity Union rejects federal government's appeal, insists on commencement of strike today. Enugu police raid ESN camp, Q1, exhumed corps of missing police officer. Wow. COVID-19, Lagos leads as NCDC records 144 new cases. What stories do we have in the sun? Okay, let me quickly take uh, Governor Bayosa. So, um, Governor Diri is asking the president to immediately constitute without any further delay, a substantive board for the NDDC Commission. It says that it is absurd to have 1,700 abandoned projects mm. in Bayelsa mm. alone, which is not the only state within the NDDC. It says the idea of an uh, interim administrator on that board is strange to the act that created the NDDC mm. or, the, uh, or the ministry, and that a proper board should be in place to monitor projects and how they go. I believe that, you know, it's a continue, NDDC continues to be a conduit pipe. Yeah. And that without proper regulation, without proper faces on that board, it meant to won't do. achieve what is meant. In fact, it's been a failure. The creation of the NDDC was to help quick, fast-track development, uh, development of infrastructure within yeah. the Niger Delta and all producing states. But that's, not, yes. that's not the story. Mm -hmm. What we see is that certain individuals... Mm -hmm. Individual mm -hmm. money, individual mm -hmm. projects. So, so let me take the story of Enugu State. The police raided um, a community in... Um, Enugu states in accordance with their drive to reduce criminal, um, they said in a sustained onslaught on criminal elements. So they visited a place called, I'm sure I'm going to, this name, Agui Bije <laughs> in Enugu EZK local community. Okay. Um, they, in carrying out the attack on what they call is, um, the suspected IPOB ESN camp. They found the dead body of a police officer who mm. was serving in the local government in the Igbo is a North, North mm. Police Division of the command. He went missing July 30th and they had not found him since. So they um, got information and in <clears throat> their regular attacks, they found the tactical team. They, was, they said that they had a um, tactical squad and Operation Restore, Operation Restore Peace carried out this intelligence driven just to don't read on mm. that at uh, on that area between August 11th and August 12th, and they were able to um, get hoodlums out of the way. They ran out. There was an attack. One person was killed, but they were and they recovered 12 firearms, including um, ARK2 assault pump action guns, locally made beret pistols, 97 life cartridges, two machetes, diggers, all sorts of um, Toyota Sienna, Honda Pilot. One I asked, all of wow, this within everything here. 20 different brands of motorcycles with their plate numbers removed, one bullet bulletproof vest, hmm. one pair of police camouflage uniform, one pair of military camouflage uniform with a cap and military singlets. A lot of things were found in this camp, and I must applaud the police for what they've done. Our heart goes out to the families of Opanachi Johnson, who lost his life hmm. in the line of duty. So painful. Let's move on now to the vanguard. Train attack, remaining kidnapped victims in critical condition, ex-negotiator. Current challenges shall pass, IBB tells Nigerians. Zamfara governor bans motorcycles, others shoot on sight. Adamu says federal government can borrow till eternity to lead to disaster, Neka, Atiku, LP and others. Effect total Okada ban, Lagos monarchs, stakeholders tell Sowolu. Insecurity, economic woes top agenda as government meets today. Strike. Anxiety as federal government ASU team meets secretly. 2023. Again, we can meet Peter Obi and others. What do we have in the vanguard? Video headline. So, national chairperson of the um, APC was speaking mm -hmm. and addressing the issue of borrowing. He says that the federal government of Nigeria can borrow till eternity to fund infrastructure in the country. And that, you know, <coughs> he compared us to countries like the U.S., and the United Kingdom, who he says, borrow from international financial institutions to meet their needs. Mm. And of course, as expected, considering that he did not balance it with our current debt profile, he did not balance it with our current inf uh, inflation rate, he did not ba balance it with our non-productivity as an economy, mm. the, you know, the problems of uh, manufacturers, the problem of consumption of imported things, he didn't. 
So he showed that he didn't have a complex thought process mm. when he said this and he's the chairperson of the ruling APC. And of course, as expected, everybody started to react. Mm. Apart from NECA, you had other political parties yeah. reacting, but NECA, the, you know, of course, re reacted to it and said, ah, that's Nigerian Employers Consultative Association reacted that, you know, this is totally, totally an irresponsible comment, which I agree with. I do not expect him at this time when, you know, they are gunning for office mm. to be the one making this blanket sort of statement. Yes, statement like this. It's either you are talking from a place of information and giving facts. facts. We need facts right Put now. Put figures behind such a statement. Mm -hmm. Say this is the projection. This is what you have so far borrowed. This high, uh, you know, uh, servicing of debt that we are doing. Now we are even borrowing to service debt. This is why. Mm. And this is how we plan to generate the revenue to wipe it out. Not just... I will go borrow to eternity, you know, as big yeah, money. Yeah, please. Let's take the Wiki story. So, mm -hmm. Governor Wiki has been in the news. Mm -hmm. As in, Governor Wiki is very, very active. And, um... Governor Wiki had a meeting, it was here happened on Monday night with Peter Obi. In that same meeting was the um, former governor of Ondo State, um, Olusha Gumimiko, the former governor of River State, Donald Duke, former gov um, governor of Benue State, Samuel, um, Samuel Utom. And um, it was a loaded meeting. We did not know what they discussed in the meeting. Mm. But they came out smiling and taking pictures. <laughs> the meeting took place in Portacot in um, the governor's private <clears throat> residence. And I saw the photographs. Yes, yeah, so the mm. photo was in all the papers. Mm. And they were very, very jovial, happy. Mm. Vicky is cutting different, different people before APC, now Labour Party. <laughs> then a spokesman within um, um, anonymous person, you know these anonymous people, said that it's not like um, Governor Wiki is fighting anybody. They are not mm -hmm. against Article. Not for it. That they are open to a meeting. It's just sad that the Article camp hasn't made the meeting hold. Mm. Um, Governor Wiki himself spoke that him is about focusing on delivering several projects within a state so that the state can win the election. He's not going to Abuja, <laughs> unlike some other politicians that are going to curry favor with Atiku in Abuja. Yeah. His focus is on every time you see the paper, Wiki did this, inaugurated that, Wiki did this, Wiki did that. Every day they are inaugurating Something. new projects that would put them in the right light and he's focusing on party cohesion and party withholding that <laughs> state. <laughs> After they finish everything, let the people of have that feel the work that's been done. Work. So, Governor too. Bello Matawale of Zamfara State has banned the riding of motorcycles from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. in Gusau Town. And he was saying this came as a result of all the insecurity uh, intelligence they've gotten so far that these criminal elements are using bikes to mm. perpetrate their act. And so he's banning that and he's ordering a shoot at sight. Anyone who disobeys Again. should be shot. Yes. He's also blaming uh, says some hotels are complicit in this. They are the ones housing the terrorists and the mm. bandits so anyone who is caught the hotel will be shut down and he's coming all out for terrorists and we need to you know fight all of this the last paper quickly i don't think we'll have time to take it okada legotians want total ban as government announces the tribune 86 percent reduction in crime zamfara governor signs death penalty for kidnapping castle rustling and cultism nigeria to save two trillion by 2030 from malaria elimination Nasarawa Information Commissioner kidnapped. IBV charges Nigerians on patients' prayers as he marks his 81st birthday. Atiku Camp rejects Port Harcourt as venue for reconciliation. NIMET raises alarm over flood threat in Borono, Bielsa Delta, three order. Four teenagers celebrating YX success drown at Elegushi Beach. Do we have any stories here? So the major headline, okay. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Manufacturers uh, list 10 ways to revive, stabilize yes, economy. The, that's man. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria are listing, suggesting solutions to revive the economy of Nigeria. And one of the major things they talked about is that, you know, we know that diesel is at the core of the increase in everything right yeah. now, the cost of diesel. They're asking the federal government to remove the 7.5% VAT on diesel. Simple. Importation. Mm. You know, that takes care of, you know, um, car, that could easily drop the price majorly. At least by 7%. Mm -hmm. And we know because our power is not stable. Yeah. Manufacturers are losing. Some people, for, uh, come, uh, factories are packing up. So we can do that and in the immediate, mm. you know, stem things. They had all that suggestions which are in the papers, but that stood out for me. Okay. Uh, do we, need, we don't need to take everything. <laughs> they can go and read it. Yeah, they can we go and read it. Let's go on a short break now. When we return, we move on to our hot topics. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At 
TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With these bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Thanks for staying with us. This week, President Muhammad Buhari directed the Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, to resolve the prolonged strike embarked upon by the four university-based unions and report back to him in two weeks, which is 14 days. Mm. He gave the directive after he received briefings from the relevant government ministries, agencies, and departments involving in resolving the face-off with the university unions. Four weeks, which is 29 days down the line, it appears there is no end in sight as the latest round of negotiation between between ASU and the federal government ended in a deadlock at about 3 p.m. yesterday. Now the question is, who will break the deadlock between the federal government and ASU since the 14th of February? You can join the conversation and call us on 081-270-53687 or 091-390-76948 or tweet to us using the hashtag TVC Connect. This issue of ASU, ASU since the 14th of February, we have been going back and forth. They've been having meetings, open meetings, uh, committees have been set. There was a committee, I can't remember the exact name now, before this Nimi Briggs committee that has been set. And one of the issues ASU had or complained about was that they come together, they, you know, come up with these meetings, 
make their recommendations, and the federal government will say, we'll get back to you. And then they go back. And the latest anger I was reading in the papers yesterday was the fact that the federal government was bringing it down to just their salaries. Are we pay you people, increase your salaries, and you can go back to the classroom. But as we're saying, this is beyond just salaries. We're fighting a fight that will benefit the country entirely. Please, what are your thoughts on this latest meeting, first of all, and the deadlock? No headway. <laughs> um, it's so sad that the meeting ended in a deadlock. Um, when you have a crisis, I remember in, I did a um, course on arbitration and conflict resolution and in the course they mentioned that you look for beneficiaries of a war mm. when you try ending a crisis and you cannot end the crisis look at the beneficiaries if you find who the beneficiaries are they are the ones you talk to they might not be directly involved in the war but you mm. talk to them you are able to source stop the benefits from flowing to them we have beneficiaries in this crisis mm -hmm. The beneficiaries are the people who own private institutions. Sure. They are benefiting. Well, so the conversation well, also well. is hmm. the beneficiary, the people that are in at the ends of making the decision are not in any way directly impacted by whether it works or it doesn't work. Hmm. So this decision, we, we, we cannot talk to ASO about it. ASO has declared these are the challenges we are facing. Any palliative you give us, we we'll we'll still continue to make it worse. It's like you have a wound. If we don't deal with it, it will be amputation. And you are saying, let me just bandage it for you. That's where I see, I, I, the analogy I see from Asu's side. I've been bandaging this thing. If we don't deal with this thing now, it's amputation. It's a lot, yeah. And the amputation will not affect the leaders that are making the decision. Mm. So who are the people that are involved in this conflict? We have our ministers, our negotiators, who have nothing at stake. Aside the fact that maybe they will lose election and they really may not affect the election. Until we make Nigerians make the lead, our leaders understand the impact on our lives, we are not going to deal with the issue. It is far reaching. And this is a deeper look that I believe everybody should have. I was listening to, I was listening to radio this morning, somebody was saying that uh, even as chefs should shift. Why is Asu grandstanding? Wow. And here is the thing. Being a Nigerian does not mean that you will continue to collect whatever is thrown at you mm. because you have no standard. Mm. So we have been managing and managing, managing, and our public universities, I went through public universities, the average politician that we have right now went to public universities, but they dare not allow their children go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. What did you do to change the situation? Mm. It starts from leadership taking responsibility for what has gone wrong and making a decision that whatever it takes, we are going to fix it until you give a deadline. If you think you can finish it in one week, you finish it one week. If you give yourself one year, you finish it in one year. Let the um, government get a deadline from Nigerian people to fix this issue. It is not just this that is an impeachable offense. I'm, I'm, I'm an insecurity. This, the Senate and the House of Reps should make an impeachable move. The president, if students remain at home, this is six yes, months down the six line. Six months down the line. Wow. How do you expect them to cope? How will the parents manage? I have a student that um, um, is working in my organization because the school is on strike. I can imagine if she wasn't working with me, what would she have been doing? And there are several mm. of them that are doing nothing. Yeah. They will go to crime. We will have more challenges to deal with. Just lazing around. Uh -uh. There's nothing to There's do. no seriousness. I don't see seriousness on the part of our government. And I, I'm with Asu on this one. Nima. Mm. I wanted to try to, be, to not be with Asu, but you know, it's, it's almost Difficult. impossible. I think they came to the meeting with a deadlock mindset as mm -hmm. government, yes. So that's why the meeting, all the meetings end in deadlock. Because, you know, government is the person who can change things. The person who we have voted to manage our common resources to change things. ASU is an institution, a uh, representative of, you know, our educational sector, asking government improve infrastructure yeah. and every time you go to the meeting there's a deadlock mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, they came to a meeting with a deadlock mindset so yes. that there will be no solution mm. as soon it's clear from 2009 <coughs> till date I mean 2009 till mm -hmm. date yes. about what they want mm -hmm. one key outstanding one before UTAS and IPPIS featured was improve our, our public institutions of learning grow our institutions we are not up to date. Education is changing around the world. The same government will say unemployable youth. Mm. Use that to describe the, uh, the products of these institutions. But refuse to invest 
in those institutions to so make it up to date. So individually, Nigerians now, there was a, a, a funny meme on, a, a, a joke on Twitter about Nigerian banks do not, not having tech um, Staff. experts. Yeah, I saw it. All the tech experts who took their personal funds to train themselves online and outside the country are relocated. Are relocated. So those who start hiring them as expatriates to come and work hmm. in the banks. So this form of our education, our government, our educational policy makers are not up to date about inter artificial intelligence, new modern uh, forms of education, new modern areas of uh, knowledge and growth. They are not. And also is screaming. <coughs> Update, update, update us, upgrade us, don't leave us as we are. We can't <laughs> remain stagnant. And the same people will then say, okay, um, institutions should put a, an age gap on employment. Of course, you are only advocating private universities. Just as we had the private institution come and water down our public schools in primary mm -hmm. and secondary. Mm -hmm. So you're doing the same thing, saying, find an alternative, find an alternative. On, on Monday, I think, we had we the topic about, here. Yeah, and I kept true. saying... <laughs> That alternative is not for everybody. Yeah. We are a country of over 200 million people. If you put that alternative in front of us, not you will tell the larger number. The, somebody came out the other and said, education is not for everybody. It's not for, ah. Even minimum education right now is not for everybody. Apart from Lagos State, we cannot boast of other states where mm. we say their public secondary schools mm. are doing well. They have good products. We can't. So we, a government should be worried. Government should be on... Asu side, Asu on the other side right now. Government should be the one saying, Asu, you are not growing fast. This is where we want. This is the new department we are creating. Not just asking private institutions to come and create, those, uh, establish them as a, a, way, a waiver for taxes. They should be on Asu side. Every of such meeting, there's a deadlock. The one that pain me most is that the president finally, mm. see, like he has heard that Asu has been on how many months yet? Mm, just just like he just heard. Mm. He now gave a directive. To oh, yeah, resume. Give me, you have two weeks mm. to give me a report on this. After the meeting, when the report came, what did you see? So, lip service again. Mm. They come with him to the meeting with his mindset of dead look. Oh, Let's take me. a short break. When we come back, we take phone calls and messages. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. The Federal TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blasts, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and 
it easy. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC Communications Story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Thanks for staying with us. We're still on the ASU issue. Um, I've always suspected that it seems to me like the government is not uh, really serious about our educational system because they are not directly involved in the ripple effect of having their children stay at home for a long time. And you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you cannot understand. You cannot, you're not able to empathize with someone when you have not felt what is happening to that person. Everything you say would be lip service. And all over the world, it seems to us that it's Nigeria that gives very little in budgets when it comes to education. And these people have been clamoring that we need to upgrade, like Nima said. We need to update ourselves and nothing is happening. Uh, Tope, how do we begin to hold our leaders accountable? Hold them accountable to understand that if they don't solve the issue of education, it will filter down to insecurity. Because we have a lot of people who are idle who will go to the streets and begin to take up one crime or the other. If we would not solve the issue of education, it will affect our economy as a whole. People are not able to uh, think of solutions to solve the problems that we have. So education is basically like the bedrock we need to have some of these things, have creative minds, think up ideas that will move the economy forward. How do we explain to our leaders? So I say... My other laughs, you say top boy goes to school. <laughs> As a student, you know, um, studying business and leadership. Top boy, I won't want to miss your point. Let's take Mamza from Nasarawa and I'll come back to you. Oh, oh we lost him. Sorry. So go ahead, Top boy. You know, um, I, I, am, I am in school and were the first two weeks were just talking about ethics, mm. impact integrity as in all that we're doing and sometimes i feel like are we still discussing this same business ethics because your values shape your decisions mm. and your decisions have a far-reaching impact on your world values. so if i choose as an individual to make my business all for profit business regardless of anything going on what would happen is the impact of my decision will mm. affect my society. Yeah. If I say I want to buy a generator and point it into a school beside me, because I just feel I don't want the smoke in my area, I am going to be giving children cough, mm. cancer in future, and that's my selfishness. So our individual values as leaders, I've said this before, everybody, as you are picking up a form to become a politician or, or to context for a position, you should go through basic leadership school. Mm. And you must be grilled Every to ensure you pass. Because if you don't understand the impact of your decision or indecision on every other human being, mm. like then you will that. not know. Now, another part is empathy. Mm. Before I come to empathy, let's take Ade London. I'm okay. coming back to you, Tobe. Good morning, Ade. Good morning, ladies. How are you? We're doing amazing, sir. Uh, uh, the, yes, the truth must be told. When this administration comes to power, 
Uh, the appointed professor in the Ministry of Education as the Minister of State, and they put a master order on top of the professor, mm. the started fighting. Mm. So the man didn't come back. The man was fighting for something better. And I want to have a different vision. In that apart, my last born, which is my last daughter, attended the same university with our present daughter in Southern University. And if, at the first time, when you come there, eight of you, eight rooms, eight students per class, give you teaching, food, freezer, everybody sharing, everything is there, is there. That is how university should be. Mm. In Nigeria, they will be looking for water, they will be mm. working for my own life, but they will be suffering. Mm. The hygiene is very poor. Well. This, so how would they care? Their children are here. Yeah. How would Adamu Adamu care? Mm. This is the problem we're having in Nigeria. That is the truth. So they don't care about that. And this will affect HEC in the coming election. Bless Nigeria. Thank you, Ade. So, empathy. Empathy. I, until... I, you know, as a, sing, as a single girl, I had a few friends who's had children. I've heard about miscarriages. I've heard about people having stillbirths or all of that. Oh, you didn't and get it. I did not understand mm. because I just, it's never been my experience. And when I got pregnant and I had a miscarriage, um, it was different. Mm. When I see anybody pregnant, it's not conscious, I pray. Mm. Because I understand that this Anything is a life or happen. death situation. Mm. I can only feel that way because I went through something like that. Empathy is not something you can buy. You must wear the shoes. Mm. If you, even if you are the kindest person in the world, your reaction will be different when you feel it. Yeah, true. I have friends that they do. Mariah never vomited when she was pregnant. If you see the vomiting, she will say, hey, yeah. But when I see you vomiting, because girl, I pregnant. know what you're going through. Mm. I know it is not by your fault. I know that you know what you feel like. Mm. Our leaders cannot understand Mm. What the parents and the, the, and, and the children that are, and the people that are off school for six months, what they are going through. They can never understand because there is no politician. And please prove me wrong. If you are a politician in and Nigeria your child and your child is in a school, public school, let us Nigeria, know. Please let us know because until you are in that place, you cannot empathize. And if you cannot empathize, you cannot solve the problem. You need to get into the trenches and understand what they are feeling. And then you will understand that I, I don't care. Whatever it is, get this back, back in school. school. Get this back in school. What do you want us to give them? What get the money from let us find the money anyhow and give it people so they can get back into school that's how you solve a problem because you understand the impact of what you're doing let's take this call muhammad from zaria good morning muhammad good morning uh you see the foot of the man on this is the, the president who is the chief and who is the hello are you with me we can hear yes you. go ahead what i'm trying to say is that who keep blaming the ministers, the committee, or whatever, as to strike? At the foot of the matter, the president, from his body, has the will of as to strike. And it is very clear that the nation is not in his priority. Mm. The issue of whether the nation is not in his priority. Mm. All his children. All from you. So he has no reason to be in peace. It's a very deceptive person. He deceived my parents. All his clips are going around. On all the questions, challenges made on truth. All commitments to the nation. The line is more from The line is yeah, not there. Yeah, I can't really get him. The line, is, I just heard that um, maybe it's not the parity of. Um, Education is not the priority of the person. Obviously, Nima. from action, you can tell a person's intention. If it was priority, it won't be here. So, um, adding to talk with um, points of empathy and the, the previous one on um, ethical, leadership. ethical leadership, I wanted to add the love sincerely. Nigeria has people. been bedeviled with leaders who do not love their people mm. and the land they are from. Mm. Mm. The UK deliberately, deliberately, I'm not even going to go to America and all of that, deliberately created what they call educational tourism, marketed it. I hated while in public universities and at the law school how British universities will come, private British universities, yes, not so even the public ones, and come and market it. One person in white suit will come and, come and tell us how it is the best place to have a master's mm. and how 
they are highly priced in the Nigerian employment market. Mm. Mm. And every leader who is from Nigeria did not find it irritating that Talele, who are you? Who are these suits? people? He didn't, didn't pain them. No, now, there was an alternative. We saw that education was growing. And we started to say education abroad was better than here. And he did not pain any of our leaders, not even the present one. Mm. Every leader to 2009, to 1999, in fact, before that, to the military, let's just say the military, they didn't value education, but before that, none of them, he didn't pain them that, what, what do we do? it that I must do, mm. that my own people will not remain backwards compared to this forwardness I consider forwardness in another person's country. And that's how we are here, where we are today. They do not love for themselves mm. what they love for others. Oh. So you selfishly carry your own side and say, ah, I can afford it. Mm. And it's, it, it starts with our elites. If any government comes into power today and say, let's consume local, the elites will say, but I can afford it. Why do yeah, I have to why suffer? Don't I, yeah. Why do my child has to have to suffer? This is not for me. I am more privileged. And they will say it's hating on for you to tell them that alternative has to be short. And because they all are taking their children abroad, education, of course, will not be priority to a government yes. who's asked to continue Who has to an strike. option? In fact, somebody sent us the breakdown on our uh, group, the production, I think producer sent it. Asu only did not go on strike in 2021. Every They've always year. gone on, on strike. strike. Yeah, we know. There has always been issues to deal with. And if you come and the issues that you address every time when Asu is on strike is salary, you're not the serious government. You're not ready. You're, You're not, not ready. ready at all. I'll come back to you, uh, Nima. Let's take this call, Ladeji. Good morning, Ladeji. Good morning. How are you, ladies? We are fine, ma. <laughs> the Lord bless your efforts. In Amen. The Nigeria to thank you. Amen. Uh, and the Lord bless all your husbands that allow you on this program. <laughs> thank uh, you, ma. And it's well, it shall be well with you always. Amen. 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 Uh, you know something? I think the government is not interested in anybody's progress, only them. Mm. And uh, I am so saddened that Nigerians are just looking at them. As far as education is concerned, I thought especially mothers who have been on the road now, half naked, going to national assemblies, standing in front of a uh, uh, Let us see how many of us they can kill. You know, it is very sad. We are just felt like they are doing us anyhow. They want to turn these children into nonsense, into bandits, into all sorts of things, so that they will remain on top of us. Look, let me tell you, before uh, we retire from the University of George, my husband as a lecturer, wow. he knows this. Children go anywhere all over the world from our university, especially medical teach? doctors. Mm. And they don't have to write any nonsense exam anywhere. Mm. They just sit in, they just sit in. Please. This thing, we cannot allow this thing to continue. Please, you know, you have better heads than me. I'm an old woman. Please, hold on. Let us hear from you people what is the way forward. You cannot do it. is trying. Because I have ASU friends that are, if you see them now, they are just nonsense. They can hardly eat. But they still continue with this strike. I do only have to have children. Yes. Some of them have children at work. And they can do anyhow. But they are suffering for the rest of us, for Nigerians to be better. It's mm. not only well, how much is their salary, how much are they paying them. In recent times, they say the uh, judiciary will be taking uh, 10 million naira per month. Uh, in national attempts will be taking, I don't know how many billions they, they go up in one year. Uh, education that we balance in Nigeria that we make us where we were before. We were, we were one naira. To one pound, one naira to two dollars before. Where are we now? Please help. God bless you. Please bring that here. Let us know how we are going to join in this fight. The Lord bless you. We have Thank a you, night. Ma. Thank you, Ladiji. So, Let's take a short break, please. When we come back, we take more phone calls and messages. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. 
TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Thanks for staying with us. So some persons have said that um, ASU is fighting for their pockets. Mm. But I beg to disagree because with the new um, you know, um, discussion on the table, which is we'll pay you, we'll increase your salary so that you can go back to school. They are saying this is not about, in fact, it's insulting that you reduce it to just the salary. We are fighting for revitalization of the universities. We are fighting for autonomy according to best practices. We are fighting for a new payment platform because the one that you have given to us has a lot of loopholes and is not along with international best standards for loopholes. universities. So how do we still keep saying that um, ASU is fighting for their pocket at this point? So for those who are, sorry, Go ahead. those who are advocating that there should be a premium paid on education, okay. that this continuous free education, almost free education in universities is not sustainable. Those, will, those people would say, but you see ASU is even more of a patriotic platform, Move. more group of people than the government. Mm. They said, allow the universities design the solutions. Yeah. IPPIS was designed with a foreign, and it's not even a, from a foreign platform, and it's not even a perfect platform. Use UTAS. We created UTAS. Let it even fail first. Mm. They are more patriotic. Yeah. And that's, patriotism is what we are asking government mm. to be. Mm. Patriotism would help us see things more clearly. If it is not for us, created by us, for our own people, we will leave it until we have better ways to do it. And only when we need to improve 
Let our people go and learn the skills and, and come, come back here. and empower our own. We've lost it. We are not getting where we want to. Where we want to get. Ojuti, you go go na no get shame. That's all they say. The person that laughs at the failure of their or the the, the, the failures of their brother or, or shame of their brother, mm. the person is shameless. Yes, true. Because the shame go later spread. Mm. Look at where we are today. Who values in Nigerian universities? Any Nigerian universities anywhere? And even these private so-called ones that I just it's just the guarantee that you graduate in four years that is that is valued. It's not that you get the best of education, that standard. you meet the best. It's not for standard. Yeah. And because of that shamelessness of our government, thinking hey, you have to have a British name, you just came back from... That's why we are here. here. We are. And we are shameless. Mm. It should be paining every leader who has passed that Nigerian universities are now looked... People who went to the UI of the uh, UI then, people who called it a um, uh, great uh, mm. those people should be paid that that glory is now in stories yeah. as opposed to be the state and the present name of those schools. Please let me take this call, Dr. Mackinde. Good morning, Dr. Mackinde. Do we have Dr. Mackinde? I don't think we do. Sorry. Um, I was reading goes to school the case study of innocent mm -hmm. and why innocent started the motorcycle business he said because mm -hmm. everybody was selling fairly used motorcycle and he felt nigerians deserve to use a brand new motorcycle yeah why did he go into selling cars why must nigerians keep oh, buying fairly, fairly used cars, cars? Mm. nigerians deserve to use to new use ones brand new to use brand new cars mm -hmm. um the Founder of um, Construction Kaiser yesterday said why he started his business at 27 or 26 or 27. He said, as a young engineer, he went to site and he saw a white man. He mentioned the person and he was just smoking and was insulting labor, mm -hmm. educated Nigerians, engineers. All them were and he was not insulting them. Wow. They were not even he just he employed them laborers. as laborers. And so they were engineers, out. graduate engineers, and he insulted them and he said, in my country. He said, mm -hmm. that, he said in my country. Ah. I will show you how to treat Nigerian staff. And he set up his company simply because he was vexed that this is not the way to treat a Nigerian. Mm. Politician. Patriotism. In my country, you dare to come. Do you know that I was in Abuja over the weekend? All over, we say to Meitama, you will see signboard. Uh, um, have an alternative passport. Buy a second passport. Yes, now like everywhere. It's marketed mm -hmm. in... In my oh, country, office. you would tell me that my universities are not good and that if, your, if my children go to your own school, they will get better employment in my country. Who do you think you are? Who, that leadership feeling of, I know what Nigeria can do. Mm. I am a product of Great Ife. Mm. I'm a product of Lasso. I'm a product of UI. UI. And UI can deliver more than your Cambridge or Oxford if we give it attention. Let's go back to this school and make it work. Mm. That is leadership, I beg you. But Tokma, you Why? cannot do that when you don't have a physical... There's, no there's no stake. No, there's no, you don't there's have no a stake. Feeling. There's oh, no yes, there's no, the there's stake. no connect. Your children are not there. You cannot have no, that when... No, you so must have you feeling. Cannot, That's hold, on, hold on. You cannot have... That sort of feeling when you have an option. That's the problem. Mm. The leaders have an option to so, go so outside. I, hey, hey. The but constitution think, allows that option for them. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot be divided. I want to solve a problem so somewhere. I, I get you now. An option is a better word, but every Nigerian has a stake in we Nigeria. Do this. Yes. We in the Nigerian have a story. Every, every, say, I once, I always say it on this, uh, but I must say this carefully. I was walking around here, but you know the way we used to go there as students to shop. And a foreigner, I don't want to mention country, he was walking like this, like ah, Buga, with Buga, and he wanted to brush me. I say in this country, he died. Here. I went back and used my gidigbo gidigbo spirit to push the <laughs> idiot out of the way. How dare you? This is my father's country. Mm, my father my land. ancestors were put here by God. He makes no mistake. Mm. But because of this. Mentality, this apologetic mentality of seeing ourselves as somebody as did a comedy recently, and somebody was supposed to be AJ and blow trumpet, and the skin color just changed. Why yeah. do we demonize ourselves? Mm. She, if God wanted to use human beings to do in Jenny, she, they will never ever put people of black race. Mm. I don't understand. I don't get it. We need to change this mindset. We are good people. Mm. It was in our our the best of our economies where when we focused on what God. Put inside of us mm. when we put dignity in the farming human value when we value when we, put human the, when we valued our human resources when our people found respect in tilling the soil 
Hmm. Since we started to make excuses and say it's only white color, if you go to invest, hmm. you only learn arrogance like that way hmm. and see where we are. Hmm. Do you know am I? I'm a professor and all your shouts of what? Of what? What have you created as a if professor? If you put your name now, they call you ah, Iyalole, farmer. This my grandfather was known for farming. He was known to be wealthy, selling cola nuts, farming granite all the way up north and going and coming. And that there was respect then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Share the money that me I'm bringing and shouting lawyer up and down. Can it change anything in this economy? Mm. We should start thinking well. There's no mm. dignity. Every Nigerian here is frustrated, insulting their country, constantly calling our government. Nobody is really have a respect. Being a TV host, I can tell you that being a parent is one and it's not paying the people in government and saying don't, don't go there do i compared this? it recently with i compared my money recently with foreign currency i, I was depressed for like that time, my papa my grandfathers did not know what dollar was hmm. Hmm. They, take they only yeah. held their naira and it had value they had yeah. to carry coins around and coins had value yeah. today we are all huh? we have team from the uk good morning team good morning team I don't think we have him. So I was saying recently that I compared my money. <laughs> the money just entered the account. Gang, gang. I now said, okay, let me change it and know what I'm worth. And I was, for like a week, I was down. I was feeling very bad. And I was asking myself. I'm working hard. I'm working. I'm not sleeping. I'm working hard. I'm working back to back. I'm not doing. See, imagine people who are even doing one thing. I'm not doing one thing. So money is coming in from different angles. But even at that. When I put everything together, I just knew that we need to find something homegrown mm -hmm. and find it very quickly so that we do not lose our value. Now, my question is, what will it take the federal government for ASU to get back to school? What sort of conversations should we be hearing from the federal government that will show us that they are now ready? Or should we just assume that this is how it's going to be? So I know that whatever happens... ASU will not be on strike before election. <laughs> That's the fact. Uh, <laughs> you think they will settle that? Whatever day? happens, it's about interest. When they, when they realize that this, uh, this interest of ASU is going to conflict with their electioneering process and it might cost them the election, they will settle. Because at that point in time, it's, it will get to them. Hmm. Um, but I think it's a, will, a willing mind. I say, I say, I've said it in several fora. A willing mind will find a thousand ways an unwilling mind will mm. find a thousand excuses. Yeah. So when you are willing, when you are ready, you will find a solution. And it might seem this is way beyond us, but in, when you are ready, when our government is ready mm. to fix the issues within the health, the um, um, education sector, this education sector that I was talking about, this strike that is going on, when they are ready that we want to fix that problem, they will sit down with intention to solve the problem, not intention to get this person to compromise. I don't want to be the one to compromise. They must be the one to compromise. They should bend. Okay, let's give them money. And if we pay their salary, they would go. Mm. We're just still trying to find ways mm. to deal with fruits and not the root yeah, of the problem. Yeah. Once we're ready, we're not ready. Yes. Mm. Let me take this call from John. John from Enugu. Good morning, John. Uh, I want to make a few conclusions. You know, if your discourse about the ASU strike. Go ahead. Uh, yes, um, I think our leaders, you know, they have failed us in this issue because they don't care of what the students and parents are going through uh, because they are not affected. Uh, let's take, for example, about last month or last two months when we have, uh, you know, the aviation or something like that. In, that is, in less than a day or two days, that really find themselves stop the problem because because they know if they stop flying up and you know they go by the road, you know, they might <laughs> involve themselves you know in one kidnapping issue or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they are not concerned about you know about the students and the parents, that is why they don't show any seriousness to make sure our students get back to school. Uh, it is just you know, a cheerful thing in this country. You know, for for the whole university to go out of school for six months As now. All yes. So I think the students 
and the ASU, it is better for them to, you know, to stand on the ground. Let them solve this problem once mm. and for all. Mm. Yes. Thank but you. My own view, I... Thank you so much for that. You know, you said something now that mm. elections are around the corner, yes. so likely there will be, there will a, be resolution. A, a resolution. But mm. how does ASU stand their ground in getting this resolution? If you are, that's how we will know if they are really serious about fighting for the universities. What are some of the things they should present? Are they going to now make a compromise because probably money will not flow in just before elections? Mm -hmm. Or they will still insist on everything that is needed to be done for them to get everything that they're asking for? So a strike that has, you know, we've, this is not the longest. We've seen the longest. We've seen a whole year yeah. of strike, I think, mm -hmm. in Jonathan's time. And it was surprising how ASU compromised mm. and how we are now back where we are. So when Tokwe raised this issue, my head just do gagam, gagam, gagam. I imagine be before elections that UTAS will be approved. I started doing the calculations. Mm. They won't build the infrastructure. They won't invest the major amount. They'll do a, an MOU or a, another, MOU. another MOU and paperwork and say, okay, this is how we'll do it. And do just a fraction of that. And then ASU goes back, and then we're back again saying not fully uh, implemented one. the resolution. So mm. I am scared that ASU might. But what is most important is that if you want to fight, fight. Mm. It's just that the Nigerian parents now, NAPTAP, uh, NAPTAN, <laughs> the students, uh, NANS, all of them, everybody is already tired. tired. Yeah. We should collectively fight this fight. Our universities have to be on the path to recovering their glory before we say this strike is, uh, is over. A government who cannot see what Asu is saying and saying, you are not even saying it better. Let's improve on what you're saying. This is the goal. Mm. It's a problem. Mm. This is not the government we should be negotiating anything with. Mm -hmm. On this one, even if we go into elections on a strike, Asu should remain where they are until there's a concession and a proper plan so that Nigerian students don't come out of a strike and then go and back, then go back again. Few months. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's take this call quickly. Tim from the UK. Good morning, Tim. Yeah, good morning, ladies. Good morning, sir. Yeah, uh, first time caller. I've been trying to. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Yeah. You know, Frank, uh, regarding your discussion, you know, it's, yeah, good morning. Oh, you're listening to yourself. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, I'm fact, I really appreciate your work, and uh, in fact, uh, you know, this is my first time calling. I've been calling, but not really to get through, you know. You're listening to your TV, sir. Listen to us directly. Yeah. Okay, you see, regarding this issue, in fact, uh, Nima have really actually nailed it, uh, the, the deal. Because our leaders, as long as children are not schooling in public schools, nothing is going to work. It's the same thing with the health system. And in fact, they will break the sort of leaders we have in that country. Because they don't have, they don't care about, they don't care about people at all. You know, it's, they just care about themselves. And it's very disappointing that, that so we have such leaders and a situation like this is, has been going on and nothing is being done. You know, in fact, my heart beats when I listen to our program and what is going on with this country's life. It's like how these people have been discussing. They don't really care at all. And it's my fact. It's a disappointment. Right from the top of the leader to the lowest. You know, if their children are schooling in public school, this all this mess will not be going. Mm. But because they don't care. And unless the youth really look at this, like the coming election, let them just put all these all this leaders up and then let's go past a fresh leader. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. I, I, I was wondering, because I just remembered the uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals, where we're supposed to be working towards quality education, which is number four. And I'm asking myself, do our leaders really have a clear understanding of what quality education means for a country as a whole? Do we have the, the people who are at the helm of affairs when it comes to uh, the educational sector, do they understand the meaning of what is going on? And is it also wrong for ASU to fight for autonomy? All over the world, universities have a form of autonomy where they are able to control you know, what comes in, and that's how they are also able to um, find other avenues to get funds to fund the universities. For, so for me, I'm just hearing government saying like, I can't take care of my, because this is government. The school is within the care of the government. It's, the gov, it's a government school, government universities. So you're saying that I don't have money 
to take care of my own people. I don't understand. So the question is, do you think ASU has a right to fight for the autonomy? Of course. Um, fighting, when you say, fighting for autonomy for ASU would be, um, we need to shred the entire fabric of the university structure in Nigeria. They will need, we need to go deep. Mm. They will need to change the laws. They will need to revisit um, how they earn, how the money flows in, um, create an entire structure. I think that's a long-term project. Okay. I think in the short term is to create a system where in the, it's basic. When you go to school, you should be able to know that you're getting in the, like, the quality education. The lecturers have said for us to deliver this, give us better facilities. Yeah. And they've asked, they've quantified how that would be. There was a, a conversation around TED Fund, and we know the way things are. And the NDDC is an example. Mm. You create an agency to solve, as an intervention to solve a problem. Then the agency will not have directors, board, dire board of directors, <laughs> and plenty of committee members. committee members. And then you will now have, like, when you check the revenue that comes into the agency, about 40% is going to cover running costs. And only 60% is going into infrastructure actual, development. Yeah. And even that 60%, a lot of bribes will take place uh -huh. within. So what gets to work is very small. That's the story of TED Fund. A few projects that you are seeing was a result of the TED Fund. We, we saw that, okay, these things can actually work. If all the money that goes in. So there must be a willingness in the government that every money that goes to the educational sector as an intervention on this thing, only 10% should go to running costs. Anyhow, you want to be, make sure that you reduce your operations mm. to the barest minimum and focus the money you're getting on, imp on impact-driven projects on ground mm. and release the funds. It is, I, know that, I know that I, I studied the numbers. I'm not, the, I'm not an ignorant Nigerian um, talking. Yes, I understand that we don't have money in the economy, but I know for a fact that the elections going on in the next, uh, in the next one year, money we billions flow. of so will let me pause you there. So let's, let's take priority on what Sharon. is most important yeah. to us. Let's take Sharon from Lekki. I'll come back to you. Good morning, Sharon. Hi, good morning, ladies. Good morning. Thanks for having this very, you know, insightful conversation this morning. Thank yeah, you. I, I'm calling to ask three questions. First of all, all the money they've been recovering, recovering from looters, what are they doing with us? One. And second, all the money they've been recovering, all the money they've been recovering recently from ESTC, from this person, billions of naira, all the donations they've been giving to other nations. What is the federal government doing with this? That's one question. The second question is that, the, the second contribution is that they do not care. Because if they care, I don't see how they will let young, innocent Nigerians stay at home for six months. It's not even, it, it, I, I, I cannot even think about it because nothing no works. Right. Nothing works at all in this country. Nothing works. If you have to put, put into context what the lecturers are asking for, they're not even asking for too much. Mm. They're not asking for anything. They're, the only thing they're asking for is revitalize our university. Let there be development. That's yeah. all. Mm. So in, in their right senses, the federal government should not even, they should not even, it should not be, it should not be, they shouldn't dialogue it. They should give them what they want and let the institution work. Nothing comes out from our university. If you go to the engineering sector, they don't have anything working. If you go to the medical sector, they don't have anything working. How can our, our, our Nigerian youth even compete with the so-called universities stage. abroad? You know, it, I, I, it, when, you, when, you, when you think about what ASU and my, the universities are dialoguing, you, you wait, you wait for this, you wait for Nigeria. Election is coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking forward to what they are going to campaign with. Mm. If Nigerian students are, are, they've been home for the past six months, mm. and we have like over 13 people to go and then bought from for 100 million, which is 130, 1.3 billion naira. If that money alone, if a political party that is even in power will take that money and donate it to ASU, mm. it will solve one half of the problem we are facing in this, in this, in this, in this, in this country. But who am I? We don't have anything to say. Mm. All we do is complain, complain, and they never listen. Thank you. Mm. Let's take some messages. Che Doze says, let's be honest. The issue of ASU strike does not benefit just <coughs> private schools, but schools abroad, UK, US, Canada, yes. even wow. Ghana. All schools. Let me add even Ben Ejoin. Yes. People that can afford to send their children to private schools in Nigeria would rather send them abroad. Draining our even scarcer forex services and reserves. Uh, Fessor Sakibuyewa says, ASU and federal government are not sincere. 
but it's the duty of the media to educate the pub uh, public objectivity on ASO's incessant strikes. If federal government can't implement the agreement in 2009, we are deceiving ourselves if we think that mm -hmm. the federal government can implement it in 2022 when our country is broke. Um, Professor Imonoha Enahena says, state and federal universities should allow for minimal payment of school fees so that, the princip uh, so that universities will become financially independent of government resources. Mm. Otherwise, this impasse between ASU, NASU, and SANU and government will become reoccurring impasse. We must develop a national educational education plan with a team in place to end this perennial ASU, ASU NASU impasse that's resulting in strikes and enact feasible policies and programs to forestall further con um, contrary terms. This English big person in our <laughs> IV towers. <laughs> mm. Yes, Mr. Cruz said Nigerian youth should go and learn hard hand work. After all, the expert with them no even go big school before they make them. Mm. Nigerian government don't care about the masses. Politics in Nigeria is a means to escape poverty, not caring about who voted you in. Mm. That's from Mr. Mm. Cruz. Um, we have um, a lot of comments are just yeah. yabbing the government, yabbing the government. I really would love us to have more engaging um, comments. Yes, more engaging. Talk. Let, let's engage our leaders. You know, we can just, if we insult leaders, um, it, it will make us feel temporarily. How do good, we engage them? We don't have a sense that they are listening. Tweet, talk, uh, this week, there you jump, we'll take it. Okay, take it. William Solajumoke <laughs> says it's very obvious that education has never been the priority of our leaders. Mm -hmm. In time past, imagine if our airports are shut down because of strike for this long and they cannot move in and out of Nigeria. They will find ah, solutions quick, immediately. Quick, quick, immediately. they will find solutions. Let me even so, add to that, Enima. Uh, there are conspiracy theories. You know, I can be a conspiracy theorist <laughs> sometimes. Where it seems like there's a deliberate attempt to keep the poor poor. Uh, because when what we see is uh, as we strike a lot of poor people are not able to afford that education or go and graduate at the time they are supposed to and by the time they are contemporaries who are the leaders children mm. graduate and come back from the Obodo Yibo mm. studies and everything they take up all the very good positions uh -uh. and then the poor people are still left to struggle how can the government prove to us that these conspiracy theories are not true see, you see if a government's child a, a public office holder's child, or even every any elite Nigerian child, schools abroad get employed abroad. Ah, yes, <laughs> because you see this mentality. Nigerians used to think that you know going abroad was a thing in the civil service. Then, when they had a, a lacuna in one department, they would send a Nigerian to go abroad. When he comes back, he comes back with a wide foreign taste. And then it starts to see Nigeria as hard, as not up to standard, and people started to carry the education that they use government resources to give them and move abroad. Mm. That's how this abroad thing started. Mm. Once you go abroad, your taste and, and lifestyle start, you start to say, no, this is not posh. The same shalanga you use when you were growing up becomes distasteful. Mm. So everything, even the place you used to eat, everything becomes distasteful. So Kuku remains here. We call it progress and modernity. To, to hate the black pot your mother used to make you a call. Mm. And rather than create pots and create cooking utensils that, you know, or things that will improve and leave it here and improve your, you move. You mm. move your children and say, that's suffer life. Mm. It's not for it's I not suffer for you. a lot. It's not for me. And you continue to leave your people backwards <laughs> while you think you move one of yourself forward and the same people sit abroad and be tweeting, Nigeria is a backward nation. God will cash all of them. And judge them. All too. of them. <laughs> So um, I, I, I hear, I hear, I hear you, Nima, and I and I think that we've. It it seems like we're repeating the same thing, yeah. or like we've been saying this thing so many times. It's been six months that we've been on the matter, matter discussing ASU, discussing ASU. I can, you know, if you had told me like three months ago that we'll still be on this discussion, mm. like we'll still be arguing, what should you give? Who should negotiate? I will say no. I, I was there. They will resolve the issue. But no, we are still on the matter till now. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just so saddening. Um, when I was employing um, Rachel, who is, who, is, who is a mass communication student of um, Yabat, um, Unilag, into Rep360, I thought, yeah, your school is on strike, Abby. Just come, just come. At least in the next few months, you'll be doing something in the office for me. Mm -hmm. And see, she has become pro wow. in video editing. Voiceover skills have come, which seems to be a plus for her. But she's missing out on it. She's lengthening the timeline she would education. use to get. She's getting yes. education. Yeah. That's yes, yes. But many, it's, it's, the challenge is our leaders 
I'm tired of pointing fingers and blaming. I wish I can just go there and just do one abracadabra and everybody will just, their head will just screw on and they will focus on mm. what can be done because I believe our leaders are very resourceful. We have smart when they people want in to. leadership. Mm. Yes, we adding smart that people in leadership and it's just the willingness to do the work. Mm. Um, I don't know why we still have the same Minister of Education after so long, honestly. <laughs> Sometimes if nobody's not working, you fire them. The same one who said they work out on the uh, let's, let's, let's take a short break. When we come back, we probably look into solutions. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it.
Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blasts, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the Welcome back. So I think we've had a, a robust conversation on ASU and we hope that they quickly resolve the issue with the federal government so that our students can go back to school as soon as possible. But there's also another issue would like to talk about which is affecting a lot of nigerians right now so there is no respite yet for airline operators in nigeria over the skyrocketing price of aviation fuel otherwise known as jet a1 as the price hits 903 naira per liter yesterday from 808 naira on monday uh, this is according to the daily trust report and they said the development has put pressure on airline tickets with passengers paying as much as 200,000 for a return lagos abuja ticket while lagos kaduna uh, lagos kanu return is between 150 thousand naira and two hundred thousand naira depending on the time of the day we also saw a video uh, on social media that was showing a lot of empty seats at the airport because most people are no longer you know traveling because of this increment in the price of tickets how do we get out of this you can you know join this conversation and tweet to us as well but ladies what are your thoughts on this uh, price of aviation fuel and how do you think we can begin to come out of it? People need to travel to do business. So, <laughs> um, I think that the, a thriving aviation industry is concurrent with a thriving economy. Um, Nigeria is not that big. Okay. We're populous, but we're not that big in terms of land mass. The, everywhere in Nigeria, the distance is about an hour. You know from lagos anyway let me use that on a plane, on a plane. Mm -hmm. and it increases efficiency you i i launched um an estate in benin and the reason i could launch the estate in benin is because i knew that lagos to benin via plane was 35 minutes and so i can go in check my site on what's going on and dash out mm. and i can create business there even while so the economy is not just lagos alone the aviation sector, if it doesn't work, if the aviation sector doesn't work, it would mean people will be reluctant to do businesses in other parts of the country where it would take them hours to get there. Mm. Insecurity. When we have challenges with, I'm driving on the road, mm. we are entering some funny, funny corners, you don't know who will lay you on the road. People prefer, let's fly to the place yeah. as a shorter way to do business. Yes. Everybody is not going to fly. But the quality of business that will take place will be more when flights can take you from one point to the other. When I'm in America and I see local flights, you see local flights, you see thousands of flights every day in Books. America. Local flights, mm. just within People the country, just moving. it shows trade. Now, two airlines are folded up in this year because hmm. of inability to sustain funding. I believe strongly that the government, is not. this is not a conversation just around um, 
um, let's help the, uh, um, the sector because mm -hmm. the issues facing the sector is the same issue facing manufacturing. Yeah. Um, diesel price has gone up. Aviation fee is now 900. Like, this is just to use that. Wow. It is too far apart. What can be done? When challenging situation comes up, there's need for innovative strategic thinking. You cannot do the same thing you were doing before. There must be collaboration. You cannot have a, which is why they are delayed flights. And I think don't delay the flights. Just book. Have two flights in a day and let it be full. If your airline is not full, collaborate with another person so that if you are all going to Abuja, why should you delay my flight for three hours to go to Abuja so that you are now merging two um, trips into one, mm. which is what they now do. So the planes get to be full and all of us are forced to stay within that line. Let's, let's, let's be more, let's start thinking of other ways to make this thing work. We don't ever get water. They, they barely give us water. I think one airline still gives that their pack, but many airlines now, they don't just enter, just enter the land where you are going to 30 minutes flights. What are we doing? Mm. Um, propeller planes, Zippo, they're not using the small, small planes that are small. Go to be there, you'll be able to go, 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 go. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> are we blending machine? But they've had to get interesting with, but the government needs to realize that the aviation sector is essential mm -hmm. to industries thriving businesses. at that level, businesses at the mm. top level. So it may not affect, I know Nima is going there that this is elitist, it's big people's market. No, I don't think but so. But it might not affect everybody. But <laughs> it is important. <laughs> very, very important. And people are still traveling. Just it reduces profit. I will spread the profit somewhere else. As a yeah, business so somebody person, has to pay for it. I, if my, I would increase the price of my Bini site because the, every time I'm going to Bini now is 200k for just mm. L, 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 my trip alone. Where would the money come out from? On top of the land. So I'll calculate how many trips I need to sell plot of land. Mm. I'll put it on the land. Customers will buy it. And they are okay. costing more money. Exactly. Nima. It's business. Yeah, you. <laughs> I did not say that. They are not bringing saying. rice through LA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See? <laughs> exactly. I think that government should start to worry about the larger numbers than as to, you know, the smaller numbers. Okay. If you look at the aviation sector, as important as it is to industry and all of that, it serves only a few. Hmm. It serves only a few. For a few that can make decisions. So over the many. They, this is, they'll be flowing, <laughs> flowing and flowing. <laughs> Have they made the decisions mm. to better the lives of mm. the many? Mm -hmm. No. And so, yes, it is core. It's core. Uh, aviation for is this is being subsidized. The, the National Assembly, they scream like say they wanted to die when aviation for went up and then like decided to say they will pack up. They were looking for alternatives, but they were serving a few. Mm. The hardship is in the number the larger numbers. And it's painful that we want to focus this way, as opposed to focusing on diesel. That employment will be you know, <laughs> suffering because of that. Manufacturing is suffering, and at the end of the day, our currency is losing value because of it. Mm. I don't pay for a Zimbabwe. Mm. Personally, I heard that this was like, ah, this I do forbid. not pray. So, we were watching Mugabe doing it every day, every day. There was one time he was talking, and people called him the patriotic African when he was saying his CBN will just continue to produce notes. And Nobody was talking to him within his people about the, Telling him the truth. Or about the long-term effects. Now, bread. They were buying bread in millions. Hi. There was protest then. I, I don't even want to recollect watching those videos on a one popular TV station with my dad. I don't even want to leave it. I don't pray that's Nigeria's story. Mm. And so, yes, we must worry about the aviation sector, but we must worry about many other things. And we must put our priorities on the larger numbers. Mm. We don't want crime to grow. We don't want, you know, and we cannot have our larger numbers unemployed and worry about the few. Like, you know, uh, aviation, mm, this says just a few. Yeah, but we have to worry about... And it's about affordability. Okay. When I went to law school, I hated to travel 10 hours on road. Mm. The first time I said, no, 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 I'll do it by road. I hated it. When I do one hour, <clears throat> to Abuja, nobody tell me. Every time we save our money, we flew to law school. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I know all that students, in fact, the largest mm. number of students... Mm. Who always went by road mm. they had to go by road mm. and so if a policy was made is it for those of us who, who we call this saving but who could afford or the people you know we productivity yeah, me, productivity yeah. is in our numbers is mm. in our strength mm. and we cannot use our numbers every time and save a smaller number that's mm. all i want to so say. let me disagree with you on that one because i know that most people moved to taking a flight because of the fact that there's insecurity along the railroads. Mm. If you check most of the northerners who do business from Kano, Kaduna and all that, they used to take rails to come, you know, have their meetings and all of that. But a lot of them moved with all those 
you know, bandits today, insecurity to, to, tomorrow. The roads are also not safe. There's a lot of kidnapping going on in the roads. So people are moving, not because they would have preferred it as an option, but everybody needs to be safe. Where is safe? So how do we start serving? Where is safe? Holistically, so we have two issues here. We have the issue Let of aviation fuel. We have the issue of diesel. We have the issue of insecurity that is moving. I like that too. you brought it there. Okay, I love that. So there's an alternative to moving. There's there's remote um, work. There's online meeting. There are other platforms, apps that have been created to help us. It worked in COVID, mm. but the security issue is it just by finding one alternative out and leaving the problem on ground that has changed anything? Of course not. Farmers, we are losing. <laughs> where will our agricultural diversion uh, for uh, diversion? For our of our resources and economy is not working. Farmers have left the farm. Insecurity is costing us much more. And rather than do something about it, we say no. Let the businessman do his meeting. Yeah, let the aviation work so that businessman can go and hold meeting. <laughs> the businessman don't have anything to sell. Mm. Is it English we are selling? Is it meeting we are talking? <laughs> That's what, no you think. Please help me here. <laughs> that's what you think. Um, no, that's what I some, think. Some, that's some, not just what I think. Sometimes it's not about it's about it, it, the. Big businesses mm. is a game of number. Yeah. If I make one person more effective, a person can employ 5,000. Yes, it trickles yeah. down. It's, if, one, if, I, yeah. if I make one person effective, so I would go to, I'm doing a program. It's for businesses that have capacity to scale and impact. And so employ they, they, more people. Yes. So the conversation is not about every business. Your business might be good, but mm -hmm. how can your business scale? What's the level of impact your business will it's have? Making. So I would encourage and support. It might seem selfish <laughs> that I'm supporting a, a, a few businesses, but these mm -hmm. businesses, by supporting them, and, I'm the having employing. a ripple effect yes, that is huge. So I, am not, I don't believe that it is work for manufacturing against um, aviation. Mm -hmm. I believe that they must all work together. Look at the ASU strike. If ASU doesn't, if we don't improve the quality of graduates that we have, the employers of labor will continue to struggle yeah. with what the, the people I have to recruit from. So you cannot stop, um, you can't say, oh, I want to fund the education sector. I will not fund the education sector. I need money to do this work. Mm. Fund the education sector because when the education sector works, we can have more innovation yeah. that probably would drive down the cost within the aviation sector. Yeah. All of them are interwoven. Yes. They all work we can't do one and we leave the other. Good Good Anima, I'll come back to you, please. Let's quickly take this call. Ikechuku from Enugu. Good morning, Ikechuku. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, yeah, good morning. I am a Christian caller. Welcome, Welcome to, to the show. show. Okay. Um, you, you know that discussion about the, you know, about the aviation fuel, right? Yes, sir. Yes, it is uh, scary. Uh, you know, the Nigerian economy is gradually sinking. And uh, the government is not helping issues. You know, allowing the boat to sink uh, is going to cause us a very serious problem. Uh, I could remember 90, that is in the 80s, I boarded a flight from, from Enugu to Lagos, Nigeria Airways. 35 Naira, fat 2 Naira, which is 37 Naira. Mm. But now, how much is it? The money of the hmm? Naira. We are talking about 1980. Yes. Uh, no, people cannot even fly now. Mm. Going by the road, everyone now is now stranded. Because the people that are using flights are people that are afraid, you know, to go by the road because of the you yes. know, it's for you. But now everybody now is just stranded. So mm. we have to cut our coast according to our size. Because we are talking about the economy. It has affected all the things. In the body, items, the food items, everything. Because I would think the referring back to the old days. Okay, for example, 1984, I wanted 1984. A case of mirror then was 150. But now a bottle of mineral is 150. Just imagine. Hmm. <sighs> Thank you, uh, Ikechuku, for that Talk call. Talk with uh, Mr. Statistics and the comparison that I... But when she now said that they are interwoven, I would leave it there. Yeah, they are. The MSM is account for this. About over 60%, if over, way over 60%, of our economy when we talk see mm -hmm. serious numbers. Mm -hmm. And these are the small, small businesses. <clears throat> they might not have the upscaling statistics that you talked about, mm -hmm. but they employ more. 
And if we focus on, and how many MSMEs are looking to travel? They are only producing with they, 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 they then, you know, move their products by road. It is diesel that should be our concern, not aviation for yes. an aviation sector. <laughs> no, we need to look no, at it holistically. Wait now. I think Nobody's we're economic we're talking about. In order of priority. I mean. In order of priorities. Mm. You see this? We talk about this who have the the chances to upscale mm. these ones. Mm. They can do a remote meeting. They can. We should focus on where the priorities are. Our MSMEs are now folding up. Ima, do you know how many Our companies? MSMEs are fold. Our medium scale enterprises are folding up. Okay. Uh, Let me quickly take this call. Come back to you. NS I'm from Lokoja. Good morning, I'm NS. Good morning, my good people. Good morning, sir. Okay, I'm um, NS calling from Lokoja. We can hear you, sir. Yes, you uh, the the issue here bothers more on uh, the ruling class. I think I call it a conspiracy because. The, the precursor of this problem lies in the negligence from the ruling class. They did not take our education uh, sector to serious, and that's why everything is going down. Mm. So nobody talks about education because of, uh, they don't care. All we hear now is the flies, how they can fly and fly. If there's a law mm. that says that the government of the day, nobody should be allowed to take a flight if our road is bad. Then there will be a kind of a uh, reaction from the ruling class. Because mm. nobody cares. The road is bad and it does not want money to be fine. And that's why they are all, you know, starting to put the place. Mm. So I think the, the, the issue is just that we have not ready to make the, this country work. The ruling class are the ones who cares about how they will survive. Mm. So I think the problem has to go back to them and they know how to feed the class, the, the, the economy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We know mm -hmm. that um, if this, um, the macro economy affects the micro, mm -hmm. it's, it, it trick, everything trickles everything down. And I believe example. that we must, exactly, we must handle all the issues holistically. Mm -hmm. If these people are not able to make profit, they will start laying off people. No, they, A lot of people two, lose jobs. The two that have shut down, what, what would happen to all the staff? Mm. The staff is not just direct, okay, air hostesses. The, everybody involved in the business, direct contractors, indirect contractors are all involved. The impact is going to be, is present already. Yeah, it is. Amonoji Production says, the solution is let government provide security so that people can travel by road very well. Yeah. Imagine they got to Abuja being 150 to 200. But by road, the risk is 30 million to 100 million. Depending I'm on the telling numbers. you. He also said, my question is, why is the government seeing those money that they are using to support other countries? Where are the money retreat from looters? Those that were able to get 100 million naira presidential tickets, can they assist the government? <laughs> <laughs> then on the previous topic, he said, the current minister of education is, and if the employer of this cannot see this, the disaster the man is doing, mm. then <laughs> it is time for, for us to ask why we are where we are. Ah. Mm, it's it's really painful, but mm -hmm. I think um, I, say it's I want to take this with. Okay, take it. Let's go. We're this one is funny. Okay. So with Nigerian innovation, does the airline Airbus conductors calling Aya. those who want to fly? Bini 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 <laughs> bini straight. <laughs> <laughs> they have to wait. Till conductor feels I'm waiting till. Till Airbus has to wait till conductor feels off the plane just mm. to relax us. Mm. You know. Mm. We don't have time. Okay. Just your final okay. words. Let's go. God Almighty will help us is develop this country. Amen. But we need to begin to love this country. Mm. And love for our neighbors, what we mm. love for ourselves. Yeah. If my child deserves a good education, and every other good, child out there. Let every other child to get, get that access to education. That. So I think we can wrap up on that. Thank you so much, ladies, for this robust conversation today. And we hope that um, ASU and the federal government can do something quickly so that our students will go back to school. On the matter of um, aviation fuel, I don't know how we can give yeah. solution to that. We're just hoping that everything will work out well for our country, Nigeria. And that's all we can take on the show for today. Join us again tomorrow and have a lovely day.